Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here with the secret history inside of your fish tank. Um, I just wanted to uh, do a live chat, check out how this goes. And I'm probably going to do it just for like 10, 15 minutes unless I see that people are in here. Um, but I just want to figure out how to do all of this. So uh, let's see here. Well, let me pull up the live chat messages. Um, Hey guys, uh, let me get the messages up on here. Um, okay, so now we've got messages. Um, and I think this is the first time I've done this, so I'm just going to do kind of an update of what's going on in my tanks today. And if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to ask me. Um, can somebody uh, try just saying hello really quick? Because um, I can't tell if the text thing... Yo, Alex Bentley, thank you so much, brother. All right, awesome. Okay, so this is the first live chat uh, that I've, or live stream that I've done. So I'm kind of just testing it out. I'll schedule one in the future, but I was just gonna do a quick little tour of my fish room, AKA my living room at the moment. Um, and so we've got right now, we've got these pelvic acromis uh, tenateus, uh, Delt red Nigerians, um, and they have been spawning. Uh, they came into my tank the same color as they uh, as they had been in the store, which is like kind of this silver lavender color. And then they ended up turning uh, blood red, as their name would uh, suggest. I mean, they turned red. And so uh, the female and the male actually got this purple belly together. While she started to fill with eggs, they got the same markings. And then the leopard print um, on him turned orange. And yeah, oh yeah, totally. The false eye, well, check out if she turns around, check this thing out. So I did a video recently on that. And right there on, the, the, on her tail, but also next to her eye, there's like a really uh, glowy, glittery thing next to his too. And that's their um, their ear essentially. Um, and it's also like how they balance and figure out how deep they are and all that in the water. But she does this dance when she's trying to entice him. Right now they're spawning. And so she'll shake. Let's see if she does it in a sec here. But she does this like shimmer shake thing and... Uh, the way they hear is through that little sparkly false eye ear, but um, it's also so that if another fish takes a bite at them, they're just off slightly too towards their head. And then also so that uh, I think it's to get attention basically. Um, but this morning uh, I recorded and I'll probably put it up this afternoon. They were actually um, breeding um, and, uh, like going into the coconut together and right now they're pretty calm but she was doing all sorts of like bending herself almost in half and like spazzing out it was pretty cool to watch and then she'd like go get him and then go in the coconut and they'd both go in the little coconut here and he'd barely fit and then he'd like fill his mouth with rocks and uh <laughs> like give her a present of rocks i guess I mean, I guess we give each other presents of rocks, right? Like wedding rings and stuff. But yeah, she's got some beautiful uh, highlights on her side. Another interesting thing, if we can get the light to, if I can get the right angle, is she uh, reflects UV light. And so that light that looks golden from this angle, um, but purple or yellow from this angle, it's actually, most uh, fish have guanine crystals in their, in their um, scales and in their flesh. And those have to be grown, it turns out. They just figured this out at University of Florida Oceanographic Lab. They have to be grown in um, a vacuum. And so they have to grow these things in their body in complete vacuum in this cell case. They're really small. And um, any fish that has that metallic gold rather than silver sheen, it turns out... That's an ocean fish uh, adaptation, they think, originally now. But um, probably fish swam inland and evolved or got trapped inland, things like that. But it makes it so that anywhere where you see that gold shimmer, like carp have that too, it causes like a, 
a blinding light reflection. And if you were to look at it, it'd be like, you know, the Pink Floyd prism with the light scattering. It's like that for UV light. So even though we can't see it, like she's reflecting light off every surface around her right now in the UV spectrum. And under a UV camera, if you look at fish like there, she goes doing her little shimmy shake. Um, uh, yeah, so it's interesting that you ask about uh, so many people in the U.S. have Pelvicochromus tenatius, while main, you mainly get Pelvicromus pulcher. Um, so, pulcher means beautiful. It's been around uh, longer in the hobby. But So, I have a video, if you want to check it out. It's really long. I'm sorry about that, but I'm kind of a history buff and a little long-winded. But it's about Czechoslovakian fish. And so, it doesn't have to do with, like, the harvest out of the wild so much because it's kind of hard to get stuff out of Nigeria People uh, have been for years kind of smuggling roots through Europe and things like that. But um, it's kind of been a mess in West Africa, Sierra Leone and Ghana and stuff like that. Um, Turkish, uh, welcome. Um, so basically in the Czech Republic and Eastern Europe, so the Balkans. So maybe this applies to... Um, to, to Turkish uh, as well. I don't know. You can tell me. I would love to chat about what's going on in Turkey uh, as far as uh, that goes. But um, for them, it was during the Cold War, the Soviets were occupying specific states and they brought back fish. I know you're from Turkey and that's awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm just telling you why certain breeds, this is why we have these breeds. So we have wholesale deals with um, the Czech Republic here. And uh, Seagrest and 5D and Imperial, who are all big distributors out of Florida, and and give 90% of the fish, maybe more than that, to fish shops, to big ones, to local ones, all over the place. Um, they buy from Czech, Singapore, Thailand, China. Uh, but a lot of times these... Um, <laughs> would I ever keep a Bashir? Uh, uh, no. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that's too much for me. I had snakes uh, at one point, and I've had lizards. I've had a bearded dragon. Um, I don't know. They're just kind of a lot of work. Uh, my wife is terrified of them. She's scared of, like, epistos and stuff like that. So, Or not epistos. I don't know why I said that. And sisters. So, like, she's scared of uh, the... Um, the fish that are like catfish she's scared of. So I'm trying to respect that a little bit. She thinks the quarries are cute. So I'll take you over to the other tank in a little bit. But the idea behind this tank was that it's a Congolese it, all the way to West Africa tank, which I know is a huge biotope. Um, I'm trying to get there with the plants, with the Anubias and with um, some of the grasses and things. Um, I know that the Rotala is not native there but there are rotala species but um the red is an indica probably um but i'm just kind of uh doing this slowly now that the pelvic acromis are in here so the pelvic acromis though uh in turkey what do you guys have uh oh sorry yeah so this is uh this is 20 liters that or not liters but 20 whoa sorry i'm like having problems zooming in um so in any case, the um, the this tank is a 20 long. Uh, I'm in an apartment where technically we weren't supposed to have fish tanks, and then like I weaseled my way into having them because my wife has rented this place for 10 years, and I've been here five. Um, so yeah, 80 liters. Yeah, exactly. Um, and right now it's a little below that because this morning we had a mishap, and uh, by we I mean I, and by mishap I mean my wife was very mad. Um, the uh, this uh, uh, the the power to the filter to the hang on the back. I also have um, a sponge filter in this tank too, but um, yeah, the power like where it screws in must have come loose slightly, and it dripped, and it was just dripping one drip at a time. But it totally flooded water all the way out over here into the living room, like just that gallon or two or whatever. It's amazing how much a little water can do one drip at a time. Uh, but in any case, so I just wanted to finish up the little thought I had on the uh, the fish. Um, in Turkey, What what is your most common 
type of um, what's your most uh, common fish as far as the uh, the cribs go? Is it the poulter? <laughs> Sorry, I had a phone call for a sec. Is it the poulter that's common in Turkey? Because in any case, uh, poulter means beautiful in Latin. This fish, uh, I don't know what tenatius means, but um, they're common because of that alliance we have with trade from the Czechs. And during the in the Czech Republic, yes, all these plants are living. Um, these two are, um, they are omnivores, and they have been trying their damnedest Oh, striped. Thank you so much. That's right. I forgot. Um, and these two uh, have been doing their damnedest to ruin all my plants. They've actually gone after the Anubius, which I guess makes sense because it's African, but they've like ripped holes into it. And then now it's having problems getting burnt out because of the sun, like in the in or the UV light I have over it. Um, I'm going to take you over to another tank. This one, basically, it's going to be an African tank eventually. But I wanted to show you one other thing that I got that I don't know if everybody has seen these, but they're pretty cool. So these are either called um, rocket killifish or they're called clown killifish. And that tail that the yellow that you see there, it can open and it's like bright red and orange. And they've got other fins that do that too, that they tuck right up against their body, but they have these beautiful turquoise eyes and they're probably like an inch long with their tail. And I would say like maybe closer to four centimeters actually. So a little over an inch. Um, but I got two of those the other day and uh, they're from, um, they're from Cameroon and uh Aqua or Aquarium Zen in Seattle has a couple right now, and so I had to pick them up. They're small, and it's really hard to tell because there's. Uh, do they jump? Yes, they do jump a little, but they are not going to jump more than this, uh, whatever, 10 centimeters or two and a half inches or something, um, three inches that I have. Uh, in between that, and uh, I'm going to be here. I'm a graphic designer, so I end up staying at home frequently and so hopefully i'll hear a little splash that's what i like to tell myself but we'll see how it goes and not to say that they're disposable but um i mean they were on sale for like five dollars so i'm trying it out with two and seeing how that goes i have a feeling if they get chased later when these two have kids that they um that they may jump more but really they'd have to get a running jump from a good distance for how small they are like and try to free willy it out to <laughs> to get out um yeah maybe not for you if if you have a half inch of glass above the water line maybe not but they seem really calm to me so if you have like other fish that are uh calm that might be okay um they're micro predators so they eat um, stuff down low too. So unlike a lot of killifish, they just hang out at the top. Um, Killy just means ditch in Dutch, by the way, or like trench, like because they live in muddy trenches in Africa. And uh, thanks. These are so I've got two types of surface plants. Um, now that you mentioned, I got water lettuce, and that was thanks to a GSAS member, Seattle Aquarium Club member. Um, and I've got some growing here that's taken off. And then I've also got um, the red root uh, variety of red root runners, or I think that's what they're called. Um, but she just gave me two of those too. So we'll see what happens. I want the red root to take over. It's pretty cool. But the Killies love it. The few guppies that I have left in here, this is the last of my Japanese blue guppy strain. Um Oh, thanks from uh, Auburn, Washington. One of my best friends uh, grew up in Auburn. Let's take you to the other tanks. I'll show you what else I got going on. Um, so over here, we've got a Venezuelan tank. Uh, pretty much everything in here is from Venezuela. I hate having these pens, and I hate this brand of like fry pen, but right now I have a uh, Petco Surprise. It's not actually a Petco guppy. But it was um, uh, Java moss keeps dying in my tank. Any advice? Uh, yeah. Um, how? What are your parameters like? Because 
Um, if you have a well-cycled tank, Java Moss does okay, but it needs to be loose enough to uh, to move. So, like, it needs to be loose enough that water and nutrients can flow through it. Um, my Java Moss, I've, I've wadded it up back in here before where I just kind of store it and let it grow, but it gets yellow and kind of um, uh, weird. But honestly, like, I've pulled it out and just kept it in this potted plant, too, and it survives surprisingly. So I guess it is a plant that can survive both in and out of the water. Um, but I would say, why is this doing this, man? Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get zoomed out. Um, yeah, so I would say just make sure you have nutrients to it. Make sure the, the water flow is good to it and the oxidation. Not that it needs that. It makes oxygen. But, I mean, CO2 could always help too. Um, and then if you have – I don't know what your nitrates are at, but you could be burning it out if it's too high. Um, but I think if, if you have your tank cycled, well, Java Moss should be pretty foolproof. Um, heavily tied. Ah, uh, okay. Um, yeah, you know, that's the thing about a lot of mosses is you can kind of aquascape and you can have only fish that go with your aquascape. But a lot of like platies, goldfish, things like that, they're going to rip apart your your aquascaping um, or your your plants. Goldfish being the worst, carp being the worst. Um, but, but yeah, um, I don't have anything tied down in this tank. I started by like wrapping logs with like wire and stuff and these big rocks that are like probably 20 or 30 pounds each, some of them. And I was going to start this tank as like a cascade themed, like cascade mountains here in Washington. Um, so it looked like mountain peaks and then the, uh, purple Kabamba, which is green right now. Cause I don't have any nitrogen going in this tank or sorry, <laughs> CO2 going in this tank. Um, it was going to be like, um, what are the teeny quarries? Oh, yeah. So the teeny quarries are, these are quarry hebrosis, um, and I've got six of them in here, and they mainly hang out in these rocks, and then I feed them these algae wafers, and it's like crack to them. Like, they love that. You know what? Let's do that right now. You guys want to see me feed them some of those? Um, they're kind of funky little things. And then they're, these are... Uh, Corydora julii here. I've got another six of those. Um, but so I put the wafers in. Watch what happens when we put this in. They should find it rather quickly. And then once they do, it's like it's on like Donkey Kong. Uh, feed them. Yeah, feed me, Seymour. Okay, all right. Now, oops, sorry, scared it. But now that one has found it, the other ones will all be coming over in a minute. Um, uh, other thing in here, uh, there's an odd red cherry barb that, um, yeah, the Rapashi gels. I mean, Rapashi's a little spendy. Dude, check out how these fish just come over. Uh, I don't go to Midway Pets. I stay north usually. Uh, I go to Aquarium Zen, Aquarium Co or uh, Edmonds uh, Aquarium Co-op, and then I go to um, the fish store I love just because it's like an old school fish store. It's the oldest one in Seattle, the brand anyways. Uh, Dan, the owner, is a really nice guy. He gives me a third of whatever he's going to sell um, his the fish for. He, he'll give me um, like we kind of have a deal set up. Um, and he'll do that in cash or trade trade. Sometimes he'll give me like 50%. So it's super nice of him. And, um, I mean, I think that's because you establish a relationship with someone and maybe I shouldn't divulge that. I don't know, but he's a nice guy. I think he would set that up with anybody who's breeding stuff that he wants. He wanted me to breed certain things. And so I've actually like tried to be breeding like these, uh, Corydora Julii's. And I think they're just gorgeous. Like, they have these kind of cool patterns. I mean, people would pay like crazy money to see that pattern on a Pleco. It's kind of funny, like what we decide to pay money for, um, <laughs> as far as that goes. Um, the Hebrosis are a lot more skittish. They're kind of mousy, but I like quarries. Like I don't have any pygmy or dwarf quarries, um, like the, the actual strains themselves because, um, they, 
I don't know. They don't have as cute of a face to me. Whereas these guys, when they swim up the glass, it looks like they've got like, like they should have a monocle and a top hat. They just look really adorable. My first fish, well, I had a goldfish named Elvis and I won him when I was like seven at one of those things where you throw a ball into a cup and you get a goldfish and everybody gets a goldfish and you pay two bucks to throw the ball. Um, uh, 40 pygmies in a 64 gallon tank. And yeah, totally. I love their little faces. Um, yeah, totally. I, I do. I think all quarries kind of have a personality when you look at their face, like, or at least we anthropomorphize them as humans. We're like, it has a face. Um, just wanted to point out a couple other things in this tank. You see the size of that friggin' uh, cherry shrimp back there. She's two inches long, and I've never had cherry shrimp get that big, but um, she's a Sakura painted fire, and I all the other ones are like, there's like 15 in this tank, but they're all hiding. And you notice I just dropped my scissors in there today. Um, I had these nice, whatever, fancy ADA type scissors that um, she wants to be, yeah, she wants to be in a mono shrimp. Uh, does she, she doesn't try to catch the fish, but she will definitely eat eggs. So if like the Hebrosis lay eggs or if the Tetras are like scattering eggs or the Rummies or anything, like she is on that. Like the second I find them, uh, the shrimp are already on them or the quarries are on them. Um, so yes, but in here right now, this is a, this is just under 40 gallons you can probably see the prices right in the reflection. Sorry, um, did, uh, and so this is under forty gallons. It's like thirty-eight point something. It's a weird custom one that somebody had for a cabinet, and it was free. Um, and basically, I'm trying to keep plants that are just from Central and South America in here, other than the Java fern. Yes, I know that's not one. Um, but, it, I mean, really in the Amazon, you're not going to be looking at a whole lot of plants. It's like mud and sticks and stuff, um, in, except in the wet season when you've got, like, these ferns. And, and like, so I just got this ozalot fern. Um, I call it an ocelot fern <laughs> uh, just because it's got spots. Um, I also have a cat that's hiding, but his name is Bodhi, and he is a quarter ocelot. So when I saw this fern this on so this this fern uh sword fern what is like i don't know if you can see like size wise but it's almost a foot and a half or two feet tall and it was on sale yesterday for 5.99 with all these other ones that were like this big so i got that killer deal uh and i needed something to kind of hide things in this corner like the thermometer and stuff but in here i've got um six ember tetras as i scare them six rummies um six i don't know why i've got six of so many things six 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 uh the mark of the beast iron maiden anybody um and then i've got uh an odd cherry barb that was in here before in a little school and i can't catch him he's like the smartest one ever and now he thinks he's a uh, an ember tetra which is hilarious because they'll all school and they'll go into these rocks and he can't fit and he hits his nose like he just blindly follows them it's kind of ridiculous um and then i've got 10 of the green neon tetras so i love them if you're gonna get neon tetras get the green ones because these ones like look blue from this angle and then they look if we can get the right lighting on them they look green from above like a turquoise so like why not have the best of both worlds mine have lost almost all their red though um which i don't care um whatever uh and then what else is in here uh about 15 shrimp but yeah see some of the cory abrosis are pretty laid back and they don't move that much there's another shrimp uh any questions about this tank this is not quite a painted fire uh it's probably a sakura um like probably in between sakura and fire grade you can see her saddle so that's why i say that um but her legs and antennas and stuff are are uh, dark red so uh moving over to the other tanks let me plug in the shrimp tank the shrimp tank's not plugged in right now wake up shrimp um all right so 
I know there's not that many folks watching, but I'm just testing out this live stream thing and figured people can look at it later. Do you have a sizable shrimp population in the Venezuelan tank? Yeah, there's 15 shrimp in there. Not a single one has gotten eaten. Like when I cleaned them out, I thought there's no shrimp in this tank, but there actually are a lot of shrimp in the tank. Um, there's 15. They haven't reproduced in that tank, but let me take you over to where they are reproducing. And this is because of me. When I see that they're buried, um, like about two or three weeks after they're buried, I put them in these breeder boxes down in the shrimp tank. And so these are lesser grades that have come out of that. Um, we've got some just standard um, uh, cherry shrimp. They're nothing special to write home about. They're between cherry and sakura. And then um, in the breeder tanks, um, the plants, I mean, I don't know, like, I don't have a breeder tank except for my shrimp. Um, all my tanks are breeder tanks. All of them have produced babies at different points in time, but not super intentionally, except for guppies. So, like, I ha have um, blue Japanese guppies, and then I have tiger endlers. So, if you haven't seen a tiger endler with the blue on it, let me try to focus in on this. YouTube doesn't want me to focus. Um, come on. Uh, but you can kind of see they've got this, um, like, focus. Uh, they've got this yellow pattern, and then they've got blue flares on their tail, and it's like a spade tail. And that variant is hard to find for a lot of people, I guess, around the country. So I got two of them. I got the last two spade tails. This one has it, but he's he's the subdominant one. He's the beta male or whatever. But you can kind of, maybe you'll catch a glimmer of that uh, tail in this other light. It's hard with the lighting right now. Um, but in any case, these two females are pregnant. Going to be quite the difference if you ever come down my way and check out my tanks. I know, dude. I'm so excited to see your tanks. Uh, I I was t uh, I saw your message about this weekend, and I'm hoping that maybe I can can do that. Um, so in this tank, this is my Papua New Guinean and all the way up through Southeast Asia. I'm trying to keep it coastal Southeast Asia, islands off of Asia including Australia. And so other ignore the endlers. I just needed a place to keep their strain pure. Um, and so right now these two pregnant females, uh, I, yeah, I've kept Daniels. Um, I, I like them. I've kept them outside in the summer and stuff. Then I usually sell them all off. Um, I know you don't get anything for them, but whatever. So this is, uh, a rainbow fish, uh, here we've got a thread fin. This one I just got from, uh, Tampa aquaculture down in Florida. I made friends with a guy who owns a farm and basically he's been a rad guy because I started interviewing him just to find out the history of like family farming and before Seagrest and the big distributors came in and overseas markets came in and it started as just like digging holes in the ground in Florida and filling them with water and tons of invasive species happening and now it's really evolved into like indoor facilities and they don't keep certain fish but Hurricane Irma really hurt them it uh over flooded their ponds and even though they took out uh aggressive like predatory species so if anybody had like Oscars or something they took those out even though they're already in the Everglades um they got crazy like peacock bass and stuff in their tanks or in their in their like acre sized ponds and those things have just shredded through their fish i guess so they're having a hard time down there so um any case i made friends with him he's been my inside man for um trying to learn about fish farming and how all of that works behind the scenes uh before it even gets to seagrass before that comes to your store this rainbow fish though i'm in love now with these thread fins this one's definitely an adult already but i want to get some more thread fins not of this variety this one is um the port moresby collection point i think in papua new guinea and it's got that pink tail and a neon yellowish green color but it'll flap like a uh thank you <laughs> um yeah uh the it'll flap like uh i don't know almost like a bat or something it's weird it, it like it opens up like with its fins when it's trying to impress or scare females and uh or, or impress females scare other fish and it's got really nice color so 
that's cool. And then I also got these uh, meteor minnows um, recently. I really like these. Um, I wish this stupid camera would focus. Sorry, guys. It's frustrating. Because um, you can't really see anything but Drew Carey reflecting. I need to turn that TV off. Um, but, yeah, these meteor minnows... Would you keep uh, Betta's Siamese fighters? Uh, yeah, I, I've I've kept them in the past, and I kept them in the like old dumb way where you just put them in a cup and it's super mean. And I thought, oh, they like it. That's what everyone says. Um, they live in a puddle usually, but now if I had them, um, I'd probably just keep them in a community tank and put one in there. Although I do have an interest in possibly breeding some of them because you can do it on such a small scale which is nice um so then we've got the neon dwarf rainbows male and two females probably not smart to have them all mixed in um hey bentley you still there man um if so uh i was thinking about putting a mop in here and seeing what happens but i don't know who would who would lay um and i don't really care um, but I'm just curious what you think, like with this mix of thread fins, neon dwarf rainbows. And then I've also got these, uh, fork tails up here too, but right up next to the light, they're hard to see. Um, you'd get a real mix of eggs and then, and the worry would just be that they'd eat them. Yeah. So if I move them to another tank though, you think that like they'd grow up fine. I'm just curious, like with these teeny species, like I really love breeding like five things in a tank. Okay. Thank you. So they won't crossbreed. Everyone's like, don't mix rainbows. But I thought that was mostly the bigger stuff. So, um, thanks. That clears that up. But yeah, these meteor minnows, I just want to try to show you how cool they are. Um, they are a white cloud minnow. Um, Realistically, on rainbows, you'd want to isolate species. Yeah, definitely. Realistically. But just for fun, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I don't think I'm going to get many babies out of this tank. Regardless, um, large species will crossbreed. Oh, really? I'd actually like to see a crossbreed with the furcatas and the, um, the thread fins. That would be cool. <laughs> that'd be interesting um outdoor uh what the law doesn't allow it is that because they get out into the streams and cause minnowage i mean you guys have like other problems i'm surprised they care um yeah here i don't i guess it's legal for now i'm sure they'll make it illegal soon if they did there but yeah these uh meteor minnows are just beautiful like you can't see it because i can't focus on this youtube thing very well but um, the they've got red and then like blood red on their body. Uh, I would need to look at genetics for certain. It might not. Okay, yeah, um, I'll look into that because I'm gonna do like a species feature on each one of these things on my channel later. But this was like I just wanted to get it up and running and get an Australian tank going and kind of um, let's see here. Can we? Is there a way to focus on this? Hold on one sec. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, guys. Well, yeah, uh, I guess it doesn't really let me. It auto-focuses, and that's the best I can do. But the meteor minnows, they're cool. So they were, uh, they're the same thing as the gold cloud or white cloud minnows. Um, and theoretically but they are a branch population that um broke off and they were thought to be extinct the white clouds the minnows um uh, back in the 80s like they were only in the pet trade because um of over harvesting and now uh they have found that they are back to my shrimp tank. I'm not going to do this live cast too much longer. Uh, sorry if you can hear my phone ringing. I don't know how all that works, but my wife's calling. So right now I've got baby shrimp galore. Um, this is in theory... Oh, and I need to pull that one out. So in theory, this is just females. 
this is uh, all female shrimp. Yeah, I've had uh, uh, dwarf frogs. Uh, I've had, what was the other one? They had the little, um, I can't believe I'm spacing on the name. Somebody gave it to me and uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, it has holes in its back and it lays eggs like tadpoles live in its back. It creeped me out, but somebody gave it to me saying it was rare and that I needed to help them keep the species alive and they wanted me to keep one. So I kept one of those frogs for a while. Um, did they ever escape the tanks? No, no. They're actually really boring. I don't know if I just didn't feed them right or if it was a bad mix of fish and stuff, but uh, super boring. The, the frog with the creepy back thing, uh, <laughs> if you... you YouTube like frog laying eggs in its back or whatever baby carrying frog uh they're creepy I, it's like something like a it looks like a black head that has like from aliens crawling out of its chest or something but out of its back I don't know but I've kept those frogs I've kept some tree frogs and things like that too uh, I used to keep like pacific tree frogs and things like that like local stuff um, in here, I've got albino ram's horns that I'm trying to breed. Just because if I'm going to have snails everywhere, uh, I want something a little interesting. Um, Suriname toad, yes. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, they creep me out. So no more of those. But in here, I've got pregnant females. The males are either up here or they're hiding in other tanks. Now, you would think that they'd all be shredded but they're actually really good at hiding. And if I like lift up this greenery, there's like, I don't know, 15 shrimp under there. Uh, so I let them do their thing, get pregnant. At night, I come out with a flashlight before I wake, like either early in the morning or late at night if I have to go to the bathroom or something. And I will look for pregnant shrimp in all of the, um, all my different tanks. And some probably get eaten, whatever. Um, but then I pull them out. I put the pregnant ones in here. So I don't know which is which for genetics other than my Sakura fires. So I keep them in these breeder boxes while they're pregnant. When it looks like they're about to give birth, then I move them back to the other tank in the breeder box and let them have their babies, but I close it off. And then I put the females back into the population. So it's kind of like the poor man's like, I don't have 10 tanks. I wish I did. I wish I had like dividers for these shrimp tanks. I even bought, uh, where is it? I even bought, they were dirt cheap. I bought these uh, filters for splitting up the, a 20 long with the air hose, um, but I haven't gotten around to it. Slash, I think my wife may kill me if I get a tw another 20 long. Like, I need to make the YouTube thing at least pay a little bit. I'm not monetizing it, but I am doing, like, Patreon, and so I have a little bit coming in through that. I don't want to cloud things up with too many sponsors, but I do want to do, like, sponsors that have products that I enjoy. Also, while they're out, I was going to show you guys these Peacock Gudgeons. Um, they're kind of cool. I really like them. Up close, they're really beautiful. Blue, red, yellow, and they flare. One of them has something in its mouth, and it won't give it up. They're really stubborn. Um, I hope it doesn't choke, but in any case, I traded, uh, so let's jump straight to a 75. Hey man, if, if I could get one, you know, like if I could get somebody to say they were sponsoring it, uh, she might let that fly, but I definitely can't spend money on it. This whole hobby I have built off of trading either artwork, like I paint, um, you probably saw some of the art. There's still stuff left over from a birthday, but I paint for a living and I do graphic design for a living from the house usually. I'm trying to find some more steady work actually because I've been a little slow this season. Um, and so I've been doing the fish thing and the shrimp thing. But um, you can... Uh, yeah, Bentley, let's talk because... Yeah. I need, I need to just have lots of y'all fish nerds come over and hang out and show my wife that, like, it's badass. Or come, like, bring her to a big tank to show her how cool it is. Honestly, though, if I got a big, like, 75 or 125 or whatever, uh, I would probably fill it with, like, 400 little fish. I'm just saying. I probably, I probably would. I don't know what the hell is in that fish's mouth, um, but he won't give it up. It always scares me. I think it's 
she'll see a one fifty. Yeah, dude, please uh, let let us come down, and uh, I bet she will think that they're dope. Cause right now she sees these little silver ones, and she's like, "Why aren't they pretty like your other ones in the other tank?" And I'm like. They are. You just have to, like, sit and relax and watch them. The other thing is I made this breeding pen out of the top of a, a, the test kit for API, uh, like the, the big test kit, and it's worked really well. I just poked a bunch of holes in it, but it's pretty sturdy plastic, and um, it's worked really well. But it's weird that these females are, like, ready to, to blow and haven't given birth yet. So I don't know. I hope they're not too stressed in there. But once they give birth, I'm gonna have to figure out a different. Yeah, for her birthday, her birthday is on. Uh, if I give her a 150 uh, for her birthday, I'm gonna be getting a doghouse for my birthday, which I will live in outside. Um, yeah, I did actually get so. All right, this is a good trick, you guys. If you, like, I know that it's really cliche and there's plenty of women who love fish keeping and all that, but let's be real. On my channel, it's 85% male online that, that watch this and with most fish channels. And it's, like, between the ages of 25 and 60 is, like, mo mostly who has a serious fish addiction with the multiple tank syndrome. Um... I was just going to point out really quick, I've got some carbon reallys that um, Aqua or, uh, Tampa Aquaculture sent me. He's really cool in that he's just trying to make a go at it as an independent farmer. Um, he's kind of new school in that he's using like permaculture and all sorts of like, he wants to do cr crayfish and, or crawfish, depending on where you're from. Um, like he's got Australian blue uh, crayfish uh the, the small ones that are allowed um, and they're really cool so his farm was the first place in the world to uh, get a stable like uh, breed of those red claws with the blue on them like totally blue not throwing any reds again and it was the guy that he works still on the farm who owned the farm originally it's like his he has some link to the guy but uh it it's uh he did it like 50 years ago or 40 years ago like in the 60s or 70s and it was a big deal when when they did that it was a hot item and now they've really cracked down florida you can have like friggin tigers and stuff like they've got all sorts of invasive problems so they're cracking down but you can have really crazy fish down there um compared to like our state which is funny because it's way warmer there um, and a lot more fish can survive in the water. But yeah, so this is my tank where it's just babies and mothers, and then I pull the babies out uh, as soon as they get to a certain size. They go into holding pens. Then they usually go to uh, different pet shops, and uh, my favorite buyer being uh, Dan at the fish store in Lake City. Um, what up, Dan, if you're watching this later? Uh, that fish still won't give up the thing that's in its mouth. I'm always afraid that they have tapeworms or something, but it's always just a stubborn fish eating like a root or like a worm or some thing, you know? So in any case, you guys are probably bored with this, but there are like, I can't even tell you how many shrimp I'm about to have. I had eight pregnant females that I just yanked out of here and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine more um i have it i know that doesn't keep things like super pure or true but for with my setup like i'll be able to know which one is blue and black and red out of this tank so that's good enough for me like i'm not trying to win any competitions although the blue dreams that are in here they stay in here and they now they don't come out anymore since the rainbows were added ironic because the biggest ones that they're scared of the thread fins they don't fit in their mouth i mean the babies would but they don't fit in their mouth so those minnows though they're the ones they're the ones who are going to cause a problem if anyone those or the uh the um dwarf neons so in any case, that's a hatchery. The other thing was the female fish were freaking out for some reason in this plastic until I put uh, um, water lettuce 
underneath the thing and then some gravel and that caused them to like oh there's ground below us it's okay and then i just clipped on with like file clips uh the the thing so it's super ghetto i just didn't want to go pay 10 bucks or whatever it was for the breeder boxes i what i want is a setup that hangs like all the way down the front of the tank like or ideally the back and has like 10 chambers or five chambers for for little fish so bentley maybe you can help me with that all right guys well i don't think i want to i'm going to go on too much longer this was just going to be a little test and then i kind of got carried away uh, i got these bug bites they, the cichlids really like those the the cribs i should say and then nobody likes the blood worms or the mini color pellets apparently they all like the dry food even the shrimp like the friggin dry flakes they're heathens i don't know what's wrong with them uh these this is what they like aquion tropical flakes sacrilege i spend all this money got micro worm culture i got grendel worms wow these things are growing like crazy yesterday the sides were clean nobody likes those either but the fry for these uh hopefully will like them Otherwise, all, it's all for naught for now. Um, and all these guppies are blue Japanese guppies. And that female right there is pregnant. I don't want to put another breeder box into my tanks. They look like poo. Uh, but it is the best way to separate them. So, fast food junkies. Um, yeah, exactly. It's like they want the Cheetos. They don't want the bloodworms. I've frozen bloodworms. I've gotten... I've hatched them brine shrimp. They eat those, but they seem to just like the other stuff more. She's doing her shimmy shake again. I, I'm going to post a video later today about her. Today, they both went into the cave together like five times in a row for a minute straight, which is some new news. And then he kind of sealed her in there. He'd like been nudging the rock. See the albino ram's horns? I don't know. I think they're kind of cool. Um, I don't like a ton of snails. I know you need them. I know there's nothing wrong with them. But, like, for a while, I had a pond snail explosion, and this little gal has gotten rid of every single baby pond snail, so she's my new favorite. Yeah, I know, they want some privacy to get busy. Uh, and you know what? I saw your name is... Oh, it's Octopus Crime. Never mind. I thought it was Octopus Prime. But I was going to do... I'm doing a chemistry video coming. By the way, Sunday... Uh, okay, yeah, cool. Thanks, uh, Bentley. I will, um, I don't know what we have doing, what we have doing on Sunday, because my wife dictates everything, because my life's easier if I just let her. No, like, I do what I want, and then, like, the rest of my time, I'm kind of just like, oh, well, what am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? And I know that people say that's whipped or whatever, but I, no, I'm a feminist. Okay, guys? I'm not whipped, I'm a feminist. Um... In any case, uh, you said that uh, I saw your name and I thought it was Octopus Prime. And I was like, I'm doing a video on Prime. And I was going to do a funny intro that may not be funny, but I've got this little bottle of Prime this big. And this one, I was going to call this one Optimus. Never mind. All right, guys. Well, thank you for uh, sticking in for my first live stream. Uh... I really appreciate it, guys. I'm trying to grow this channel. I'm trying to bring you stuff you like. I'm trying to bring science and history. I'm going to try to get back into, like, talking about specific breeds and the people who breed them. Ruby tetras, like, where do they come from? Are they live bred or, I mean, caught out in the wild or are they bred down in Florida? Um you know, just things like that, like why, when did things diverge if there's genetic studies on that, um, interesting quirks, medicinal properties about plants, females rule in humans and in the animal kingdom. Yeah, they sure do. Um, you know, it's very true, like all the cliches that, you know, when I was like 20 and, you know, like my great uncle or my grandpa would be like, you know, whatever she says is right. Happy wife, happy life. And I'd be like, ha ha, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, sure. Yeah, they were totally right, yeah. Um, 
I do that so that I can uh, get these fish tanks. And she now, she loves this fish tank. Let me tell you this last trick before I get off of here. Hey, uh, welcome, Patricia. Thank you so much for subscribing and chatting and being a part of the community. It means a lot to me. I just started this channel in December. I'm going to try to get back to science and history, but I've been getting a lot of stuff lately via either just people like saying, hey, I'll hook you up for a good deal or whatever. Um, if you talk about it on your channel or like, will you keep these so that you have a strain and I have a strain and like that, I'm so grateful to those people. I've shouted out when that's happened. Um, but basically I've traded either art or fish or shrimp for all these tanks. So I bought this tank and everything else has come through trade in the last few months because before that I just had some guppy tank and I actually trashed those. They were so old and gross that I got got rid of them, just got new ones. The seals were having issues. Um, but yeah, so the last little life hack that I will tell you guys, uh, and sorry if this seems demeaning to any women i do not mean it that way but my wife was like you're not getting a fish tank like i'm allergic to cats and dogs we already have a cat you can probably tell i'm stuffed up i'm always stuffed up i love my cat though he's a bangle uh but he's an f1 bangle so he's like a quarter asian leopard cat and a quarter ocelot and half egyptian mao so he's like 35 pounds and pretty pretty wild but He's very nice to me, but I'll have to do another video on that some other time. He's not a fish. If he jumps in the tank, we'll have a talk. So far, he could care less about these fish. Um, yeah, you know, I'd go find him, but I guarantee you with the way this focuses on YouTube that he is under the bed in the dark and you will just see glowing eyes if I get a flashlight. So, yes. And he, you know, actually he's a fish that, um, he's a fish. He's a cat as you say catfish he's a cat who will swim so if i take a bath which i like never do for some reason it's kind of gross to sit in my own water i know it's relaxing but something about it turns me off i shower usually um if i take a bath he'll get into the bathtub and he kind of looks scared for a sec but then he'll swim and it's because asian leopard cats they're not leopards they're little teeny cats that live in asia southeast asia and then all the way up through the hindu kush in between in india and uh they actually um swim and they get fish they like that's what they do and so i was like okay i can't have an open lid fish tank and so these weren't open at first but now they are like our humidity is really like dry because we have these baseboard heaters that suck and they cost a ton of money uh to heat the place this place is from the 1950s it's like a townhouse split level thing um and the having the open top it actually uh british short haired yeah those are nice i love cats too um Luckily, like, I can keep more fish that do more things, whereas I, I like a cat, but it kind of does a limited number of things. He watches your tank. Yeah. My old cat would go into the tank. He was a tabby, and he just, like, ooh, Abyssinians. Oh, man, Abyssinians are beautiful. Um, yeah, the... the uh, the old cat would literally dive in and then have this panicked look of like, holy sh, what did I do? Like, oh my goodness. And then like get out and cry and look at me like it was my fault. Um, the other one would just bat at the top of the water, never catching anything, uh, but knocking things over, which, you know, cats do. So uh, last thing before uh, I sign off here, thank you so much, you guys, for checking out my first live stream. This was really just kind of a test of how live stream works. I'm still new to this YouTube thing. I've demonetized the channel, even though like we're in this weird probationary period. I don't want you guys to see a bunch of ads because I'm not making hardly any money off of them anyways. So I tried to demonetize that, but in February, they're gonna kick me off the monetization possibility anyways until I have a thousand subscribers. Um, and then it's still, it's still fairly minimal. It's like a hundred bucks, like a year is what they figure you're gonna make with uh, 240,000 minutes watched and a thousand subscribers. They figure you'll make a hundred dollars before taxes a year. So I'm not like missing out on stuff, but Patreon is a good way to support the channel. If, if you're like, dude, you should totally get a, uh, uh, I don't know, a, a, an alligator guard and put it in your 10 gallon shrimp tank. Um, 
or whatever, you know, I might be open to some crazy options. Probably more open to tests. Like, let's try putting these two fish together. Um, how do they get along? Like, when we know they're not going to shred each other. I don't want to be, like, inhumane. Um, but last little trick, if you have tanks and your wife doesn't like tanks or doesn't want you to have tanks, make them pretty. Like, this one was aquascaped fairly nicely, and now it's kind of dis... I don't know. These, uh, the pelvic acromus tenatius Nigerian reds, they've ripped every plant out. Like, they have to, like, feel their environment with their mouth. Like, he's doing it right now to my crypts. Um, but, yeah, he'll just yank on them. And in the morning, I come out and they're all floating. So now I've kind of just, like, made a jungle and crammed them in there. They ate all the buds when I had CO2 off of my red Rotala. Um, in any case, back to what I was going to say before this is an hour long, uh, live stream on my first go. Sorry guys. Um, this light right here, it has, uh, up to 25,000 Kelvin in its spectrum, UVA, UVB, a little bit of that. It was an expensive light, but my wife wanted a happy light because she was depressed in the winter because she's from Ohio and then lived in Florida for uh, years. And uh, she thinks our winters here suck. I've been raised here forever, so I'm just like, whatever. It's always wet. Let's bring some more water into the house. Um, I like it when it's like that outside. Here's a normal size Sakura. When you put them in a big tank, they get big though. Like they're all over an inch, inch and a half, all the females in the tank. You can see more down there. I don't know where, where uh, Moby Dick went. She's huge wherever she's at. Um, last thing I was saying though, she needed these, she wanted those uh, happy lights for seasonal affective disorder or sad or whatever they call it. And they were like 300 bucks to get one of those stations that you put like above your desk or whatever. And I was like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Why don't we just go to a hydroponic store and like get some grow lights. <laughs> I know a little bit of something about that from college and we'll get lots of UVA, UVB. You'll be feeling great. It'll eat up some power, but you know, whatever. Then I started looking online and found out like the parameters needed for the happy lights. And if you live in a dark place in the country or like Alaska or up in the north, north of the country, uh, you know, our sun sets at 430 right now and it rises at eight. So that's kind of a short day. And then it, this is like the best day we've had in a while. It's pretty overcast it was just pouring sheets earlier and it's really dark when that happens um but in any case yeah so i got her a fish tank instead because babe it reflect it refracts the light like see the bow front it reflect refracts the light it's beautiful and so she was like oh you know yeah that does kind of bring life and we had a couple potted plants she has an avocado tree and um some other you know, whatever's around the house. Um, so then I got her a couple more plants, hung them above. I was like, let's do like a jungle room. And I'm allergic to a lot of flowering plants. Um, but like most of these are great. And so, uh, and the underwater ones obviously aren't an issue. So yeah, that's my little tip. If your wife is not into the fish tank in the living room or the fish tank period, and you don't have a big garage, I live in a like 700 square foot apartment. Um, which isn't like super teeny, but it's, it's fairly small in Seattle rents, super expensive. It's like at least two grand for a place like that anywhere in Ballard up to like five. And we're getting a good deal on ours. Um, most of my money goes to that. So I have to just buy and trade art and things as a, uh, as a, an odd artiste to live here. Uh, would you ever make a tank yourself? Yeah, I have made, um, tanks myself i've made uh, i've made lots of like uh old fashioned so i used to have this book called a boy's guide to wilderness or to life and it was published in the turn of the century it's all black and white like woodcut illustrations which i love like that's some of the art i do is woodcut um i'll show you real quick um but yeah so that uh, that book had like how to make fish tanks and how to catch local fish. Um, 1900. Oh yeah. Yeah. Turn of the century. Good point. Good point. Uh, turn of the century will always mean 1900 to me. Um, 
But yeah, so these are like woodcuts I've done. Here's one of my city Seattle, and I use the laser router for uh, cutting out the background. But then you roll ink on it. But the book is done that way. It's beautiful. And I had it as a kid passed down from my grandfather. It had how to build a fish tank with like lead lining. And you could either use lead and glass and like solder it. Or you could also just uh, build like a wooden one. I do sell those. That's how I make my living is I sell art. Um, and and uh, hold on one moment. I know this isn't fish related. I said I was going to shut up and get off of here. But I have... I'm an artist. That's what I do. So I've got books. Uh, check out uh, www.somainkdesigns.com. Ink as in like drawing ink. But I literally just have piles of illustrations everywhere in my house. Um, and maybe I have a feeling some of you might get a kick out of this. I did a Walking Dead Star Wars fusion show with a bunch of other artists. And that is Zombie Boba Fett. And then I've got Zombie Walk. And that's Wicket after a bad month being digested. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, the owl. Um, I mean, I've got lots of stuff. Just check out. Um, you can find me. If, you've, if you found me through this, you can probably find my uh, Soma Inc. website. I've also got uh, an... Uh, I do botanical illustrations too. So, oh, General Grievous. Yeah, I should do a General Grievous one. Um, and then I also do anatomy, like kind of surreal anatomy stuff. So, I mean, I've got all sorts of um, paintings that I do style-wise illustration. And then I do like graphics. I do abstract stuff. The abstract stuff is the stuff that always sells. Like I, I did this for somebody who had a Great Dane and they wanted their dog's skull, their living dog's skull. Uh, portrait. Uh, this uh, being a Seahawk, living in the Seahawk area, this is an Osprey skull in green and blue, their colors. I'm not like a diehard football fan or anything. I'll watch them when they're winning. I'm a total bandwagon fan. But yeah, there's that. Um, you might get a kick out of this too if you like the owls. This is a woodcut of, uh, uh, I shouldn't do that to you guys, uh, of a giraffe that I carved. Um, carved it in wood, then you rub ink on it push it into parchment, press it. But yeah, I mean, I work with a lot of different materials and that's kind of my day job, if you will. Um, let's see what else I've got that's aquatic in here. Oh, I've got a, I've got a crocodile skull. Um, and then last little things, I've got uh, my wife's old dog that passed away. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I do a little bit of everything, more psychedelic -y stuff. Um, but, yeah, I do a little bit of everything. I do set design for, like, Sasquatch Festival and all that kind of stuff, big concerts and things like that. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. I didn't wasn't going to start, like, an art thing. But in any case, uh, I'll probably wrap this up. Thank you so much for those of you who've joined in. Um, just showing you some more art. Uh, this is not just random swirls. It's actually a topo map of the Okavanga Delta where the National Geographic reference photo was taken. So that's what the watering hole looks like during the dry season, like the topo map. Um, hey, what's up? Lancashire. Wait, yes. Lancashire last. Sorry, it like disappeared on my thing. Uh, Lass, not lash. Uh, there's the real version of that skull. Oh, I'll show you something real cool just while we're... Are you selling any of the art? Yeah, I sell all the art. Where is my skull? Did my wife move the skull? Oh, no. There'll be hell to pay. Um, yeah, I sell all the art. Um, go to www.somainc, S-O-M-A-I-N-K, designs d e s i g n s dot com soma ink designs dot com and there's like links to stuff there also soma ink dot com and then my um my name on instagram is uh alexander j williamson uh and it's all art on there 
I sell prints of pretty much everything you've seen and I sell originals also. And I also do custom portraiture of fish and, and pets and things like that. Where the heck is my ram skull? Okay, this is gonna be an issue soon. So I got this, um, this skull I painted years ago and uh, I'm not Lancashire Preston uh from okay i'm just uh i'm gonna ignore that because i don't know what's going on i have a ram skull somewhere and i'm really concerned where it went but i painted that other one first and it turned out like i love it and uh you know what maybe it's downstairs the last thing we're gonna do on this channel if I can't find it, I'm gonna freak out because I met this crazy Hell's Angels biker dude, and I'm not joking, like real Hell's Angels guy, and he was selling skulls. Oh, there it is. And so I did that painting upstairs, which there's a print of here. I sell prints at my art shows and stuff. Uh, yeah, maybe my cat ate it. He probably ate the sheep originally, but check this out. So that's the print, and that's the, eh, and that's the real skull. And they literally, the original and the skull that I found at the swap meet, or it was actually the Fremont Far Farmer's Market. Uh, and this Hells Angels dude had a rug and he had like a bunch of junk that was clearly stolen and then some stuff that he clearly found in the desert. But this, um, he said he got it from a, an antique sale or a, an estate sale. And I looked it up and it turns out that this is a Corsican ram. It's not a ram from around here. Uh, it could have been introduced for hunting. But um, yeah, the horns and some, some of the growth plate and eye socket stuff. My friend who is a zoologist um, let me know that. And then I'm also an archaeologist and... Uh, history major so archaeology slash anthropology and history with a botany and mycology studying minor so that's kind of why my channel is got the name it's got uh, but I do a little bit of everything art was always my passion um, and so yeah but thank you so much guys for checking out this first live cast I know it's kind of rambling but it's just kind of like a get to know you get to know me let's all get together and be family um, Thank you for liking the channel, for subscribing. If you want to share links to anything interesting, that means a lot. Also, just give a buck here and there if you want in the future. Like, let me earn it from you, though. I don't want anything just like, like, oh, okay, he begged. Like, let me earn it. If, you, if something was helpful for you or... If going to uh, TampaAquatics.com saves you money on something you were looking for, maybe pass that buck back to the channel. Um, but let me earn it. Um, I don't want any handouts here. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and for participating in the chat. This went better. I thought nobody was going to show up, honestly. Uh, this went better than I thought. So, um, you guys take care and uh have a great day take care of yourself take care of your fish and uh keep on swimming guys thank you <laughs> all right i'll talk to you guys later more videos coming soon thanks for participating in this stream you guys it means a lot to me we'll do more in the future i'll announce them this was just like a spur of the moment test where i thought i'd update what was going on thanks patricia thanks everybody james thank you uh, awesome. All right, Bentley, thank you. Uh, all right, take care, everybody. Uh, have a good day.